The next thing I wanna talk about is error handling. When something does go wrong, how does our application deal with it? In GraphQL, error handling is typically done just the same way as is explained in the Apollo server docs. When an error occurs during an operation, the errors array will be populated with that error. Then you need to handle it in your application code. I'll show you an example of that. In the add item to order mutation, we're gonna try and add a very large amount of items to our order. When we do so, we see that we get the errors array populated with this error. What's the problem with this? Well, there's a number of problems handling errors this way. First of all, errors are not really discoverable. Now, one of the benefits of GraphQL is that the whole API is following a schema. The schema tells you about what types are available and what operations. And when you perform an operation, what should you expect as a result? But the errors are not encoded into the schema. They just happen and you don't know when they're gonna happen unless they're very well documented, which is not usually the case. You have to perform these mutations in your application code, never quite knowing what errors could be returned. This also means it breaks type safety. If you use something like GraphQL code generator to generate types for your storefront code, then that's completely broken by this way of handling errors. They're not type safe and they're not encoded into the schema. So the code generation just doesn't know about it. This also means that you're forced to handle errors in a very generic way. Your application will have to inspect the results of each request just to see if there's any errors in the array and then try and handle them in some way that makes sense to the user. For me, this way of handling errors just wasn't quite right. It led to a bad developer experience and it was difficult to get the user experience right as well. So I tried to find something better. I came across a great talk and blog post by Sasha Solomon. In this talk, she describes a completely different way of handling errors. The basic idea being to encode errors into the schema. When we have a mutation, we will know usually what kinds of things can go wrong. For example, when we run this mutation, add item to order, we already know ahead of time that the order items limit exceeded error might be returned. So it's kind of expected and we can call this an error result. It's another kind of result, just like in the success case, we will get the order back. That's the expected result. But also we could get these other error kind of results. So now we're gonna encode these into the schema and let's see what that looks like. Well, let's jump over to here. This is the schema now from 0 0.16. So if we look at the return type, we'll see that it is update order items result. All right, update order items result is a union type. If you're not familiar with the union types in GraphQL, they represent types which could be one of several different types. And we see we can have an order. That's what we get back if everything went okay. And there's different kinds of errors that could be returned. When you're returning a union type, you need to use a new kind of syntax, a fragment spread. So on an order, let's get the ID, the total, and the total quantity. But in the case of an error result, for example, order limit error, instead we want to get the error code, a message, and the max items. So if we just try and add one item, everything's fine we get the order. If we try to add too many, instead we get the error itself. So as you can see, for each mutation now, we know exactly what kind of errors could result. This means that we can use type safety in our front end code. If you're using code generation, you can even use tricks like exhaustiveness checks to make sure you're really handling every possible error case. This makes it possible to write very high quality software which handles all the possible outcomes gracefully. So how does this look in practice? Okay, let's take a look at the last version of Venger. I want to upload some assets. Now, when we upload an asset, there's a number of things that could go wrong. For example, we could send the wrong MIME type, in which case the server won't want to accept that and we'll send an error. Now in the previous way of error handling, we'd have to just throw away everything 
return the error in the errors array and not know much information about what went wrong. I'll give you an example. Now I'm going to upload a couple of images, but I'm also going to try and upload an Excel spreadsheet, which is not what the server expects. When I try that, I see that there was a HTTP failure response, 413 OK, not very informative. The user experience is not great. Let's see how that works now with the latest release of Venger and this new method of handling errors. I'll try the same again. We'll upload two images and then a bad file. And we can see here it created two assets, but then there was one error. And we can see that that MIME type was not permitted. So this is something that's now possible with our new way of handling errors. Now the downside is that you will have to do a little bit of refactoring of your storefront code. Many of the mutations have now changed their signatures to return these union types. So you'll have to use the fragment spread syntax to select the results of those mutations. I think this will take you about a day or maybe two of refactoring, but I believe the results will be worth it.